Labor Rights. In 1824, around a hundred women workers left their looms after the owner announced a wage cut. Women from Pawtucket, Rhode Island, inspired people to contribute to labor rights actions. However, the Pawtucket incident, like many others at that time, was not effective. In fact, wages were decreased by 25%, and the working days were extended by one hour for the workers. Before labor rights that protected workers from being put into jail for striking, workers had little chance for betterment of their workplace. Owners would just worsen conditions or fire them to let the workers know that striking was not a good idea. After labor rights were legalized, workers that protested would be protected by the law, and they found it easier to express their opinions. Now these protests happen quite often. With their rights, workers can assert without worrying as long as they follow the law. Labor rights created in the past help workers now to express their opinions about the working conditions. In the Industrial Revolution, there were around 10,000 strikes and lockouts. Although there were many protests, the workers usually lost as no one listened to them. Owners would generally worsen their conditions and they didn't consider the opinions of their employees, harassing them or getting them fired. Just like the women from Pawtucket, Rhode Island, not many strikes ended the way the strikers would want them to. For example, the Homestead Strike in 1892. The workers from Homestead Plant in Pittsburgh were suffering from major wage cuts, but the manager of the plant refused to change anything. The strike lasted for 15 hours straight, but no changes occurred. And even though they were just having their say, they were pressed for 160 criminal charges. Again, another unsuccessful picket due to the fact that workers lacked the rights to strike and they did not have much power over their employers. Later on, acts and rights were created to help protect the laborers from abuse and being fired for just sharing their opinions. In the early 1930s, during the Great Depression, people realized that strikes could be important for the progress of their country. In that time, unions started representing a new measure of democracy, along with better wages and conditions. Americans believed that workers had to have a say and that the employers shouldn't have all the power. In 1935, unions officially obtained the right to represent their employees under the law that the National Labor Relations Board passed. The National Labor Relations Act NLRA is an act that makes it legal for workers to strike and to join or form unions. Section 7 of the NLRA states that employees shall have the right to engage in concerted activities for the purpose of collective bargaining or other mutual aid or protection. By 1948, the UN Declaration of Human Rights was established. Article 23 of the UN Human Rights Declaration says that workers have the right to join or form trade unions to protect or fight for their working conditions. After the rights and acts were passed, strikes became more effective and workers felt more ease when deciding to call up a protest. The laws allowed workers to express their own opinions without the fear of being punished in a very informal manner. Today, many strikes happen annually. When a worker feels strongly about a subject that has appeared more than once in a discussion with their employers, they decide to start a meaningful movement, allowing them to show their disapproval with the situation. Strikes have gotten to be much more effective, as now, what the employees think has an effect on the overall business of the company. The workers' voices matter. Recently, a strike occurring in 2008 moved nearly 12,000 screenwriters out of their jobs and into a 100-day protest. The Writers Guild negotiates a new contract every three years discussing the requirements for the employees. This contract is called the Minimum Basic Agreement, also known as MBA. The negotiation between the board and the writers were unable to reach an agreement. So the workers were authorized to call and pursue a strike. This strike went from November 5, 2007 until February 12, 2008. This strike arguably cost the Los Angeles economy anywhere from 380 million to 2.1 billion US dollars. The strike's goal was to increase their funding, higher profits, and provide larger studio spaces. On the last day of this 14-week strike, both arguing sides came to unanimous agreement 
to approve the deal to lift the restraining order in exchange for a new percentage of payment. Labor rights formed by the hard work of many people made strikes more effective because the rights protected strikers from being harassed by employers. Due to these effective strikes, the working conditions are far better now.